A better route chapter 95 The fight entire clearing was filled with sounds of metal clashing together and all kind of different jutsus being used. Most of the rookie 12 had gotten stuck taking out the hidden sounds grunts, but some of them had teamed up to take out the the most frisome the sound had to offer. Tamari and Shikamaru were talking on the foul-mouthed genjutsu user Taiyuya, Choji had teamed up with his new flame Kuratsuchi to handle the massive ball of anger that was Jirobo, Kadamaru was still busy with Kabuto, Mito was taking on freaky little creep known as Sakan, and of course Kimimaro was talking on Kakashi as payback for the way he'd badmouthed Orochimaru. Naruto was in the middle of fight with some red-haired psycho who called himself Yugo and Sasuke was fighting his partner Suijetsu. However, easily the most interesting of the fight had be the battle that waging between Danzo and Abito, both of them were Kage-level ninjas with plenty of tricks up their sleeves after all. It was impressive just the pure amount of raw power you could feel surging through the area and it just went to show how incredible this battle really was. Naruto and Yugo were probably the ones causing the most destruction out of any of the other. The blonde had chosen to fight Yugo when he saw how much damage he was doing in his complete disregard for human life. While he didn't want to seem cocky, Naruto knew he was one of the strongest people there. It was gonna take someone powerful to contain this guy and Naruto wasn't going to risk one of his friends getting hurt. Yugo clearly didn't think much of Naruto. Why are they sending a little whelp like you to come and fight me? I'm raw unkempt power, I'll pound someone like you into the dust without think twice about it. Naruto rolled his eyes at how arrogant he was, brute strength isn't everything big fella. I think it's time you got a good old fashioned ass kicking. Yugo clenched his fist and Naruto watched as it grew and transformed into some kind of black mass and continued to do so until it reached all the way to his elbow. Something even stranger happened when some kind of blue flame appeared out his elbow. It was like his arm changed into some kind of living mechanical arm, time for you to see just how powerful I really am. Let's see how you handle this you little shit. Yugo's body was propelled by whatever kind of flame was coming from his arm and was charging straight at Naruto. There wasn't even the slightest amount of time to get out of the way so Naruto reverted to a more forceful tactic. He charged his Rasengan in his hand but gave it more power than just a normal one. He shoved the massive Rasengan, which was three times as big as his usual one, riding into Yugo's fast approaching fist, massive Rasengan. The two great forces hit and shook the entire ground when they did. Both of them flew back but stood up relatively unharmed. Yugo was grinning when he looked back at Naruto, now that was power. You're finally gonna give me the challenge I've been looking for. Naruto just shook his head, you really are bat crap crazy aren't you? Kadamaru couldn't help but think he just might have been the dumbest person alive for choosing to fight Kabuto one on one. He knew how powerful he was since he had to work with so many times. To be honest he might have been one of the few people who could have succeed Lord Orochimaru. Kadamaru brought some more silk to his mouth spit it at Kabuto, who simply used his chakra scalp to slice it in mid-air, come on now Kadamaru, I expected better out of you. Kadamaru swore under his breath, I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this so soon into the fight, but it doesn't look like you've given me no choice. Kabuto knew exactly what was happening as he watched Kadamaru's skin become covered in what looked like tattoos all over his body. Looks like it was time to take things up a notch, activating your first level of the curse seal huh? Fine, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than that if you wanna beat me. Kadamaru's cheeks puffed out and he started to chew. He opened his mouth and launched dozens of knives made from his hardened spider silk and Kabuto. Kabuto narrowly avoided the raining death and jumped over to the branch Kadamaru was on to take a slash at him. As soon as the scalpel hit Kadamaru's skin Kabuto could feel that he was getting more resistance than he usually would, his scalpel didn't slice through like it should have that is. It got far enough to make the human spider bleed a little bit but not nearly as much as he would have wanted it to before Kadamaru took a swing at him. Lucky for Kabuto, 
he knew everything about Kadamaru's style, I'd almost forgotten about your little trick. You can secret webbing from every pore in your body and hard it as armor. Kadamaru was starting to think he could do this, starting to get nervous eh? Kabuto smirked, not even a little bit. Suijetsu hadn't expect to find anyone decent with the sword in the hidden leaf, but this Sasuke guy really seemed to know what he was doing. The young swordsman of the sound had wielded Ekiburo, a blade he'd been forced to acquire while in the hidden sound as he'd been completely unable to find one of the seven great ninja swords as he had no idea where they were. Ekiburo was a large-scale dedeo and was still a beautifully crafted blade. Sasuke had been using what had become his pride and joy over the past few months, Tesho, his personal Chikudo blade. This sword was fantastically crafted from chakra special chakra metal that allowed Sasuke to channel his lighting though the blade with ease. He'd been using his Sharingan to study how the blade was used intensely since he'd gotten it and was getting rather skilled with it. They had been clashing and deflecting one another's blows for quite some time and Sasuke had been slowly gaining ground. In the beginning it was Suijetsu who had the upper hand but before long Sasuke's Sharingan discovered the patterns in his style and abused them like crazy. Suijetsu was getting rather frustrated, you call yourself a swordsman? If it wasn't for those damn eyes of yours you wouldn't stand a chance. Sasuke scoffed, we're ninjas. We've gotta use every tool at our disposal to win. Stop complain and figure something out if you wanna win. Suijetsu's eye twitched, so that's the way you wanna play it eh? Fine then. Suijetsu charged Sasuke again and the Uchiha brought his blade up to block him. Sasuke was getting really tired of this guy, so he decided to go for something special. His blade began to send out little sparks and lighting coursed through Tesho and into Ekiburo. The lighting went though the blade and straight into Suijetsu. He screamed in pain and Sasuke was about to try and finish him off when Suijetsu did something Sasuke didn't even know was possible. His body turned completely into water and his sword disappeared with him. The water charged at him and Sasuke stepped to the side to avoid being hit. However, much to his shock, he felt a sharp pain in his side. Before he knew what had happened, the Dedeo had emerged from the water and given him a decently sliced to his side. Suijetsu turned solid again and began to chuckle, that smell on you, it's very familiar. You're dating that little tease Karen aren't you? Sasuke was getting angry, first you cut me then you talk crap about my girlfriend? You are one dead motherfucker. Suijetsu raised Ekiburo back into a fighting position, bring it on. Sakan was easily taking the most damage of the Sound 5 as Mito was currently kicking the ever-living shit out of him. Mito's raw strength was on par with if not greater than her mother's now and Sakan was an extremely defensive fighter. Problem was, he didn't have anything even remotely strong enough to withstand Mito's heavy hit and she wasn't even at half strength yet. Mito tried to listen as Sakan screamed to himself, I know I'm getting my ass kicked, just shut up and let me think. Mtayo was wondering he she'd hit this guy over head to hard or something, are you gonna fight or did you wanna talk with your imaginary friend some more? Sakan snapped his head up at her, screw you. When this is all over you're going to be begging us for mercy. Mito mumbled to himself, this is guy is bonkers. Sakan scowled, I heard that. Mtayo watched as Sakan's skin became covered in black tattoo looking marks and he charged at her. The moment Sakan got to her, she shoved her fist into his gut. She was almost certain this was a fight she'd already won when she felt four hands grab her arms. When she looked down Sakan now had four arms and all of them were linked to hers. Mito didn't know what to make of this, what in the hell. She didn't have much more time to think on it as Sakan grew a third leg and gave her a hard kick in her abdomen. Sakan tried to use his four arms throw her across the field she had already regained her composure and gotten her arm back, jumping away from the four-armed creep. Sakan was glad to see that he was finally getting somewhere, well well Yukon, 
maybe we can take care of this girl after all. Mito's eyes widened as Sakan grew another head, yeah, after I helped you. This wasn't just getting kind of strange, it was full-blown weird. She was gonna have to figure out what was going on here before she could end this fight. Kakashi couldn't help but admit, this Kimimaro guy was damn good. If this was him when was sick then Kakashi didn't want to see him at this strongest. He could produce bones right out of his body and shape them into various weapons of his own design. To say that was a dangerous power would be an understatement. Kimimaro began to grow more bones from his fingertips. They shot out at Kalashi like little bullets who had channel chakra in his legs just to jump back far enough to avoid them. Once he was in the clear, Kakashi ran straight back as him to counter-attack. Creating a sword from one of his bones, Kimimaro waited till the perfect moment and then shoved it right into Kakashi's chest as he was running. He was expecting blood to start flowing from his mouth but instead he watched as Kakashi's body become dozens of snakes slithering away and reforming behind Kimimaro. Kakashi put his hand his mouth and sent a massive fireball to Kimimaro. The bone user did his best to brace for the blow but still got pretty burned when it hit. He scowled at Kakashi, you dare to use the power of the snakes that belong to Lord Orochimaru? You're disgusting. Kakashi snapped at him, it was the power that the snakes were letting Orochimaru use. You need to get over this. Kimimaro was going to kill him then and there, all of you are going to pay. Do you hear me? You'll pay. Kimimaro raised up his hands and bones began to grow from his fingertips, shooting at Kakashi like bullets which the boy only ducked with seconds to spare. Kakashi got into his snake stance and rushed at Kimimaro, relentlessly striking him. He kicked Kimimaro in the chest and while the bone user took a few steps back Kakashi used shadow snake hands. Kimimaro saw it coming and scowled, so you want to play that way? Fine then. Larch dance. Kakashi watched as bones seemed to grow out of every section of his body and he barely had time to jump out of the way before Kimimaro sliced everything in his path into ribbons. Kimimaro chuckled at Kakashi, this isn't even my most powerful form boy. I can't wait to see what you think of me at my strongest. With that they charged at one again. The killer intent was just radiating off of the field in oceans and the fight wasn't about to let up.